should be fine now. Um, yeah, my topic is on infrastructure enabling a green hydrogen economy. Um, and at first, I would like to give a small introduction to our company. So Fichtner is um, it's one of the largest um, privately owned uh, engineering companies in Germany and um, got a more, more than 100 year long uh, history. And in the late 80s, in 1988, we had our first um, contact with hydrogen. So um, we had this project in Bavaria uh, called Solar Hydrogen Bavaria which was a PV park connected to, to an electrolyzer. Um, this project ran until 1990. And after that, we started working for the DLR, the German Aerospace a uh, Agency in Lampolshausen, where they have their test benches for the Ariane rockets, which are powered on hydrogen. So um, yeah, we gathered another 30 years of experience working together with them in several projects um, at the site in Lampolshausen near Stuttgart. And um, since recently, since the hydrogen economy started taking off in Germany and worldwide, we've um, been doing a lot of projects worldwide. Um, currently, I think 50, maybe even more um, that we did in the last four years, a lot of electrolyzer projects and projects on, on the transport of hydrogen. So um, let me give you a small introduction on the current German gas network. Um, it's a highly integrated network within the European transmission system. It's fully liberalized, so it guarantees third-party access. It's, um, uh, it has many cross-border connection points, so <clears throat> it is supplied with gas coming from Russia, from Norway, from the, ne uh, from the Netherlands, and um, it is connected to several storage sites, uh, especially underground storage throughout the country. Um, so um, a lot of caverns as well. Um, we will get to that on a later slide. And um, on the one hand, we have the transmission system, which covers roughly 40,000 kilometer, and it's um, it's run by 16 transmission system operators in Germany. This uh, transmission system um, is mostly built from uh, steel pipelines with a corrosion pre prevention um, with uh, very large diameters that go up to 1.4 meters and runs on pressures of up to 100 bars. The distribution system, on the other hand, um, is run by 740 local distribution system operators and in total covers 470,000 kilometers. This is also partly made of steel. Uh, very old parts are still made of cast iron and uh, the newer parts are often constructed of polyethylene components, which are, um, which have a very long lifetime, are quite cheap, and also have a good um, uh, compatibility with um, with hydrogen, but uh, only for lower pressures. So, regarding the potential of this gas network for future use of hydrogen, um, we see several possible starting points. The first one. Um, which might be more interesting for, for the um, local networks is the blending of hydrogen. Um, here we see three different um, limitations at the moment. So there is a 2%, 2 volume percent limitation if the grid also supplies a car filling station for compressed natural gas, as this is the limitation um, for the cars. And um, the other one, which is currently the standard um, in a lot of um, yeah, and a lot of standards um, that the DVGV, the German regulator for for um, for gas technology, gives out is a 10 volume percent. So this is very well tested for most parts of the network and um, considered feasible for almost all network parts. And um, in the future or in the next standards that will come out or the next updates, the DVGV expects to raise the standard to up to 20 percent. So expect that at least a blending um, share of 20% should be feasible in almost all networks. And um, then, of course, the other starting point would be to directly go to 100% of hydrogen um, in the existing pipelines. Um, there would obviously have to be some retrofits, maybe um, replacement of old pipeline parts or new compressors. But um, that is also possible for a lot of um, existing pipelines. And the third option would be obviously to build new pipelines. And um, so this would be interesting for point-to-point -point supply directly from, 
from the point of production to some major demand centers or just for local networks. And um, yeah, regarding the transmission capacities, um, hydrogen has a lower energy density than um, the natural gas. So, um, so uh, you need to increase the, the velocity of the gas flow basically to, to achieve a similar energy um, transmission, but um, it's also expected that for most, most uh, transmission and distribution networks, um, up to 90% of the energy content compared with natural gas can still be transmitted. And um, regarding a future German hydrogen network, um, there's a vision of the German TSOs that they, they publicized. Um, in the future, they expect that roughly 6,000 kilometers of pipelines can run on, on hydrogen only. So quite a, a vast network uh, throughout Germany. And most of these pipelines, 90% should be converted from existing um, gas networks or gas pip pipelines. This, uh, these networks um, are expected to be close to demand centers, to supply centers and to storages. Demand centers being mostly um, energy intensive industry like, like the steel industry or the chemical industry, um, large cities and also uh, non-electrified railway routes. Supply centers could be um, the import or the, the connection points with the, um, with the neighboring countries and also some parts where we expect to have um, a high hydrogen production potential in the future. And um, regarding the storages, um, there, there are a lot of caverns throughout the country, so these could, should also be connected to the future network. And um, you can see this on the next slide. Um, Currently, Germany has a storage potential in the caverns of 20% of its annual gas demand. And um, yeah, this is um, covered by roughly 250, uh, 270 caverns um, with a volume of 15 billion cubic meters of working gas. And um, it is expected that these are also, these will also be capable of storing hydrogen in the future. So there are first tests ongoing. And um, the other thing is that um, due to the lower energy density of hydrogen, you need roughly three times the volume, the stored volume compared to natural gas to store the same, same amount of energy. But um, this is also not to be expected to be a constraint as, um, as several um, studies suggest that the actual um, salt cavern storage potential throughout Europe could cover more than its, its actual final energy consumption. So, um, yeah, last but not least, um, there is also a European plan for, for future hydrogen transmission network. Um, several uh, European gas infrastructure companies have come together for this publication, the European hydrogen backbone. So, and until 2040, they, um, they plan to build up roughly 40,000 kilometer of, of transmission system throughout Europe. And um, this should also be mostly out of um, rededicated natural gas pipelines and eventually bring down levelized transportation costs down to 11 to 21 euro cents per kilogram, which, um, yeah, which is considerably lower than, than on the street. Um, with with trailers, etc. So um, here you can see um, up to 2030, there will be some scattered networks throughout Europe, or at least it's expected to be like that. And uh, northwestern Germany and um, the Netherlands was might already be quite interconnected. And until 2040, there should be a Europe-wide uh, transmission network and um, which will which should also be connected to parts of northern Africa to um, to import hydrogen also from outside of Europe. So I think this was my last slide. Yeah. So thank you very much. And um, if you have any questions, um, my contact details are 